Therefore, we make it our aim, whether present or absent, to be well-pleasing to him. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, that each one may receive the things done in the body, according to what he has done, whether good or bad. Knowing, therefore, the terror of the Lord, we persuade men, but we are well known to God, and I also trust are well known to your conscience. For we do not commend ourselves again to you, but give you opportunity to boast on our behalf that you may have an answer for those who boast in appearance and not in heart. For if we are beside ourselves, it is for God. Or if we are of a sound mind, it is for you. For the love of Christ compels us because we judge thus that if one died for all, then all died. And he died for all, that those who live should live no longer for themselves, but for him who died for them and rose again. Therefore, from now on, we regard no one according to the flesh, even though we have known Christ according to the flesh, but now we know him thus, no longer. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. All things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Now all things are of God, who has reconciled us to himself through Jesus Christ, who has given us the ministry of reconciliation. That is, that God was in Christ, reconciling the world to himself, not imputing their trespass to them, and has committed to us the word of reconciliation. Now then, we are ambassadors for Christ, as though God were pleading through us. We implore you, on Christ's behalf, be reconciled to God. For he made him who knew no sin to be made sin for us, that we might become the righteousness of God in him. Amen. Now we are living in strange times and with isolation and social distancing and lockdowns becoming part of the norm. We've all had a real experience of what it is, even when we're together, the wearing of face masks, the difficulty we have to communicate one to another. There's been a real great problem that people have experienced mentally and emotionally as they've come to know of being apart, being isolated, and again, now there will be more trouble, perhaps in a number of days, unable to meet your family, your friends, unable to socialize, unable to travel. All these things have had a uh, you know, profound effect upon us. And perhaps we don't realize uh, the damage it's done in so many areas in life. But that's the news. It's one of alienation, isolation, separation, but thank God we've got another message to give this day. And it's one of reconciliation. And it's news that we desperately need to hear. It's the news, you know, that uh, is really needed. Very, very seldom is separation the answer uh, to our needs and our cures of life. Only in the most severe of circumstances will the doctor and the medical team amputate a limb from the body there comes a time when that needs to take place because the infection will go through the body and kill there's also another occasion in society where for example there may be those who have committed terrible crimes and they then separated from the community that they won't be a harm and a threat uh, to the well-being of citizens. 
There comes a time, sadly, in people's experiences of separation. Maybe only the best way forward. It was said of John Wesley himself that when his wife went away, he'd never ask her to go, but he's not asking her to, to come back. And that was the only way that he could cope. But really, separation is never really uh, the cure. It may be something that we have to go through at this time, but I want to tell you the news that God has. And thank God, it's not separation. It's not alienation. But it is reconciliation that we've got to come and speak this morning. And that's where we're going to take our text. It's from 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 18. We find these words of what then the Apostle Paul has come to know in his life. And he's known two things. One, that he has become reconciled to God. And something else, that he's been given the ministry of reconciliation. And this morning, I'm going to leave with you three questions, especially in this day in which we live. A world now which is alienated and separated. That do you now know what it is uh, to be then re united a reunion a reconciliation in your life with god and that's what we read now in verse 18 now all things are of god who has reconciled us to himself through jesus christ who has given us the ministry of reconciliation and what the apostle paul does is that he writes to these people because they're not for him, they're actually against him. And he's got to make a case for himself, for his ministry. And he wants now in this very verse, giving a testimony. What a wonderful testimony it is. When he speaks of what God has done. All these things are of God. And God has done something in his life. And he says he has reconciled not only him but he's reconciled timothy and he's reconciled even them to god and it's that question i want to put to you today with all the news you've got of social distancing do you know the experience of what it is to be brought close into union with god and you could give the testimony of what god has done now, the amazing thing here is this, is that you see, this is all of God. Now, all these things are of God. What happened in Paul's life, perhaps some of you know, he was one who could testify that he was against the very things of uh, the kingdom of God and of his son, Jesus Christ. And what happened was, when he was on the road to Damascus, the risen Lord Jesus met him when he was persecuting, opposing the Christian church, is that, well, Jesus apprehended him, stepped into his life and did something. It wasn't in his mind. It wasn't in his thinking. It wasn't he was on a journey. The journey he was on was away from God. And then what happened is that the Apostle Paul, he has this meeting, and he was brought to his senses. He humbled, had faith, came to believe, and was made a preacher of the gospel. And Paul can say, now all these things are of God. That means that it was never in his mind. It was in the mind of the Heavenly Father. It must have been, you see, in eternity that the heavenly father had set his love upon him it was on that great love of god that god took the step to come to him and when he begins and as he thinks in his life it was god who revealed himself and when you think of your experience and in your life if you've become a christian that's one of the testimonies that you could bring. 
that all these things are of him that if you're here this morning and what's happened with you you realize it was that he took that first step he's the one who did something in your heart he's the one who made you alive and quickened you he's the one who showed and revealed his love and then you came to a place where you bowed the knee and that you believed in him you're here today because it's all of god he has kept you and he's never left you and he's held you and he's drawn you with the cords of his love and you've been reconciled unto him it may be at this time that you may not realize it but in all this alienation and separation and distancing that's taking place everything is of god everything that happens in this world ultimately is from his hands he has made all things and all things exist because of him he allows things to happen in this world you may not realize it but he is the one in the very beginning who was able to separate light from darkness day from night and in this experience i have known of people in this alienation separation who have been reconciled to him they've come to him you say what happened well when that happens in your life one of the things that he does is this to bring you to himself he has to separate you separate you from sin separate you from the world he separates you from the things that you once did that's happened in people's lives and people can actually give a testimony do you know through all the separation in the world he has brought me close to him self i'm going to ask you the question have you been reconciled to god or do you still feel and know in your life that there's distance between you and him do you have that feeling of animosity against him for something is there still you see the fact that you know you're not at peace with him that's a question it's very interesting when he says that now all things of are from you know god who has reconciled us because it tells us something of our relationship with him actually paul knows and this bible tells us that our first relationship with him was one of union but there's a plague that has come in to this world which is greater than the coronavirus it's called sin and it's got some effects it makes your eyes dark that you can't see it pollutes your soul that definitely happens but it alienates you from everything alienates you from one another alienates you from this world we live but alienates you from god himself and then you know, he has done something that now you see he has brought us back into that fellowship with him when we have that news of what he has done now you may not have known that you know that there is uh, some distance you're not on speaking terms with him but you never had any idea that there was a relationship that has taken place and has been broken and he people is telling us of what he has done and i can tell you how you know it here it is in verse 18 and has given us the ministry of reconciliation when you come to know that you're right with him and one with him one of the things that you'll experience is that you would want to tell others that they can also know the same reality in their lives that's the first thing do you know of that in one's experience 
Now, here's the second thing. Do you know this morning of how you've been reconciled to him? In this world of the news of separation, there is something that he has done, and it's on this grounds that what we're speaking of now is not a figment of our imagination. There was a, a program on the radio this morning, and it was dealing with a lady, I forget the name, who was the oldest skydiver in the, in the world. And it was only a year ago I actually had a conversation with her around a dinner table. Forgot her name. But she was on the radio this morning, and she was giving her testimony of how she'd been brought up in a Christian home, and how she was brought up in Swansea Bible College. And then she had gone away, she'd become a fashion designer, and did lots of things. But then, amazingly, she said, that she was brought to the faith, she said, logically. Not that she was a logical person in her own estimation, but when she began to hear and to piece together of the story, she became a Christian. You need to know, this is what it says in verse 19, the ministry of reconciliation, that is, that God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself, not imputing their trespasses to them, and has committed to us the word of reconciliation. There's something you need to know, that you see he has done all this. How has he done it? The wonderful news, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. And that is news for the world. Oh, what great news it is to give. That in that person of Jesus Christ, something incredible and remarkable has taken place. In the very coming of his being, you know the story of Christmas, that he did something in the sending of his son that he should be born of a virgin and that divine nature, everything that's God, should be joined now to this world in which we live and that he should take on the likeness of sinful flesh in one person. It's an incredible story that the word became flesh and dwelt amongst us. And in the coming of Jesus Christ, there's been a uniting of man and God in one person. Incredible. And not only that, but in the very coming of Jesus, as he was born, he grew and he lived. There was the ministry that he had. Do you know what it was? To call men and women to himself. And when you read this account of the Lord Jesus, you may not realize it, but he has spoken to us in these last days through his Son. And he is calling us as Christ came and he called the lost sinner back to God. That's what he was doing. He was giving that news. Grace was upon his lips. The message of sins forgiven. The kingdom of God had come at hand. And in that person of Jesus, if you were here today, and you could say, I'm far off from God. I'm unclean. He'll have nothing to do with me. I can take you that Jesus came to lepers who were unclean. And he reached out his hand and he touched them. And the social distancing and the separation that had taken place, he has shown us in Christ, he has reached to the dirtiest in the world, he can save them. If you said this morning that there is me and I'm full of sin 
and the things I've lived my life for. You can see that Jesus Christ, he came to women of the night, and they knew that they were forgiven, and he gave them that news that they were accepted by God. There were people who were irreligious. They were Roman soldiers. They were cut off from the promises and the covenants. But in Jesus Christ, he could say, listen, such people of faith, they can come and they can know. They are. When you come to know of what the Lord Jesus Christ has done. Here it is, verse 19, that God was in Christ reconciling that world to himself. But not only that, how did he do it? Here in verse 18, 19, not imputing their trespasses to them. Now, how did God do that? Well, we've been told, and we can actually highlight it again, in Romans chapter 3 and verse then 25, that he's giving us here the negative of what uh, the Heavenly Father did in the coming of sending his Son to become one of us, in speaking to us in human flesh and showing us his heart and giving us his message. But in that death on the cross of Calvary, listen to this. In Romans 3 verse 25, whom God set forth as a propitiation by his blood through faith to demonstrate his righteousness because in his forbearance God has passed over the sins which were previously committed. Now he's telling us something, what he did is that those things that we have done wrong and the things which have taken place in this world, even in the past, uh, according to his people, he never reckoned them to our account. Imagine that. Is that now because and showing us in Christ, when you think that he must be against me because of what I've done, I've offended him, I've rebelled against him, I've blasphemed him, I have gone my own way, and yet, you see, he's a holy God, yet in the plan and purposes he had this, that he would send his son to Calvary. And the things that you've done have never been laid to your account. They were to be laid on him at Calvary. You see, that's the great reconciliation. That that which has separated us from him has been taken away in his death and sufferings. We've come to partake of the Lord's table, to remember what he did at Calvary. That this is my blood which is shed for you. Listen for the remission of sins, that they were taken away. Now look, only God can do this, and only he has the power. This is what he has done. And it's not only that, in verse 19, and has committed to us the word of reconciliation. At the beginning of the year, we... Um, we started a series on the communion service. And the series was this, taken from 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 1. For the message of the cross is foolishness. Uh, the word in the Greek, uh, the logos of the cross, remember what we said? The doctrine of the cross, that's the teaching of the cross, is foolishness to those who do not, but for us who believe, it is the power of God unto salvation. Now, the reason why you're here this morning is because God has done a great work. Please listen. He has sent his son from heaven. 
He has revealed to us his will in his life. He has taken away our sins in his death. But not only that, he has given to us the very teaching of what it is that he has done on that tree. Let me describe it to you like this. You need to know what Jesus did at Calvary. It's coming to know that truth of the reality. Not only that he died, but he died for this reason. That brings you life when you come to know it, when you come to believe it. And only he can do it. Only God has done this. Have you ever been in that um, experience? And we know it's not a nice one. Where um, you've had a friendship or something's happened. And then words have been spoken. A deed's been done. And now there's alienation. Or perhaps, uh, I don't know. You know, something happens in the home. <laughs> you say the wrong thing. And then there's a silence. <laughs> And uh, who's going to make the first step? And it's definitely not going to be you because you're in the right. And uh, sometimes you get yourself, don't you, in a trench and you can't get out. That's what we're like in this world. We're unable to make that first move. We can't hold out our hand. We can't make the step that we need to be reconciled to those who we were once in love with. But God has. He has. He's done it all. He took the first step. He's taken the last step. He has done it all. And there is not anything more to do. I am here to tell you the news. The news of the reconciliation that the Lord Jesus Christ has made at Calvary? That's the second question. Do you know of this in your life? And do you know of why this has taken place? One more question. Here it is in verse 20. Do you know of God pleading with you with your life and do you know of god pleading in you to others be reconciled to god here it is verse 20 now then we are ambassadors for christ as though god were pleading through us we implore you on christ's behalf be reconciled to him the third thing this morning is that the apostle paul is speaking to these uh christians and they got something against him and he wants to tell them in the very first verse that he's being called by the will of god for this ministry and whatever else they may think he has done it all and he has made him a minister and here it is an ambassador we are ambassadors for christ and now he has this ministry as though god were pleading through him to others to you this day that you should come to uh, know him lay down your arms be at peace with him repent believe trust him now i want to pick up that thought for you for a moment because it's part of this work that God is doing at this moment in time. There is a, a position of an ambassador. An ambassador is filled with a quite big authority. They are sent to different countries to speak on the government's behalf to certain nations and rulers and kings and to people of the wishes and desires and we have ambassadors all over the world well god 
has ambassadors all over the world this day pleading with people this moment that this world would come to him and what we've come to say the ambassador i cannot give you a message on my own authority i don't have the authority to speak on my own behalf but only on the authority of what's been given paul says that we are ambassadors of christ and here's the news and it is god who is pleading the word is very powerful in this version it says to implore in another version it says beseech in another version it's this appeal there is an appeal which is being made to you and the appeal this morning is that you would come to him and that appeal is filled with every exaltation and comfort and warning we we read that did we not in verse 11 knowing therefore the terror of the lord we persuade men but we are well known of god and ah, this is what uh, the lord jesus christ says in matthew chapter 10 and he says whoever receives you receives me and whoever receives me receives the father who sent me now there comes a moment in your life and you're here today so i trust that that's in the will of god is that god then has brought you here that there would be an appeal which is made to you and a wonderful news which is given to you think of what you're hearing separate isolate distance yourself and god says come to me be with me united reunion and i could give you the comfort that you could know the comfort that if you were to come to him he would receive you to himself if you were simply to say in this meeting lord i am sorry for all i have done and i put my trust in your son this day you will know what it is if you do it from your heart to be united with him an appeal is being made to warn you and to help you you must do it you need to do it think of all that's taken place with this alienation we've known but there's coming a time unless we're united with him now we'll be separated from him for eternity and you must come to him and when you come to him why would you not for one who has loved you so much for one who's only wanting your good that you would not make that step towards him do you know that that has happened in your life where you felt that god is actually speaking to you it's powerful is it not what he says that god was uh, uh, he was um, it's like if god is is in him imploring you that's why did this this task that i've got this morning and this is where we're failing greatly this is just no lecture this is no just telling you some news from the bbc this is pleading with your heart pleading for your soul that you would come to him and look no one can oh, if only we could show you of what that meant when christ stretched out his hands and was pierced for you why would you do it for another day and to know of all of that uncertainty and anxiety and a guilty conscience and the burden that you carry the shame that you have why not lay it now before him 
And so Paul can say, do you know that if you're a Christian? If you're a Christian, it may be that you don't realise in a world which is only having news, where people are cut off, that you have a message to give. And you are ambassadors of Christ. Wherever he's put you, and you should be saying to others, there's a zeal in your heart to be reconciled to him. Oh, I think that is news that we desperately need to know. And it's the greatest news of all. Whatever else has taken place, you can go out of this place this morning and you could be right with him, joined with him. You will never be apart from him and you're reconciled. Peace has been made. May God bless that uh, to your heart and to your soul.